Hey guys, how's it going? Thought I'd do a quick update on the 416 stroker. I got it all together. It's on the cherry picker and I'm waiting for a few guys to come over to help me out. I got all new gaskets on it. I even got new rocker cover gaskets. It's funny, you know, because a lot of people say that the rear main seal starts leaking. You gotta be careful about how you put the transmission on and how you tighten the bolts, those two little eight millimeter bolts, the long ones in the back in the pan. It may pull the back cover down and pull the uh, oil seal around the crankshaft out of alignment. These two little, you can see that little kind of dark, but there's right by the, you can't really see it. Anyways, there's two little screws that bolt up on the oil pan at the bottom. They're really long screws. And, you know, I had a little bit of a leak actually at one point, and I was like, where's this oil coming from? I always thought it was from the back seal there. I took the little safety cover off. I looked inside the inspection plate in the transmission in the 4L70, and I really couldn't see anything. Then I was thinking, maybe it's leaking from the gasket in the back, the big plate in the back that covers the back of the block and nope it was actually leaking from the valve covers in the back from the rubbers so i ended up getting a rocker cover gasket set and i replaced it all it's felpro so she's got all new gaskets on it everywhere so she should be good um going back to the front of the motor i was the last video i was talking about i mentioned that the cover wouldn't fit properly and it's an aftermarket cover and it's warped, or it was warped, and I had to grind out these little, behind these little dimples, and that's exactly where the oil pump bolts are located on the other side of the cover. Normally, this cover will fit no problem, even though it was warped. I had to grind those out because I, had to put, I put a high volume, high pressure pump in from Melling to the 296 pump. And it's approximately a quarter inch thicker than the stock pump because it sent, you know, the name high volume so obviously it's bigger so it it, it it it's a physically a bigger pump so it actually still fits underneath the stock cover you just got to grind those two little spots on both sides there's two there and then there's of course there's two more on the other side right there you got to grind those off on the inside take off like maybe two three millimeters and it's fine because the, the depth of the gasket makes up the difference and you're perfect um I mentioned before I had the Brian Tooley Stage 2 cam. Uh, you know, you guys ever heard of, I'm sure you've all heard of Mike Vintage Iron, I believe he was called, his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I actually asked him about cam specs and which cam would be the best cam for a 416 stroker street motor. And he suggested a 600 lift intake and exhaust, 228 intake duration at 50 and 236 exhaust duration at 50 and the btr cam and oh sorry and a lobe separation angle of 110 degrees and i'm thinking 110 degrees that's uh, a lot of vacuum loss i could be wrong but i'm guessing it's a lot of vacuum loss but maybe being a 416 cubic inch it makes up the difference but uh the btr cam i mean the specs on that thing are 225 instead of 228 on the intake side at 50 thou Lift is approximately the same, around 600. On the exhaust side, okay, the BTR cam's got a little bit more duration. It's 238 instead of 236. And honestly, I really don't think there's much of a difference that you're going to notice there. And the only big difference is the uh, uh, lobe separation angle. The BTR is 113, as the one that Mike mentioned from My Vintage Iron was uh, 110 lobe separation angle. Um, you know, doing all kinds of research. Summit's got their own uh, YouTube channel and they got all kinds of information and stuff. And, uh, you know, I listen to them and some of the cams that Summit's Pro LS cams that they have out, like the cam, the BTR Stage 2 cam is their Stage 1 cam. It's not a monster and I don't want a monster. I want a cam, I want a motor that runs smooth, relatively smooth. I don't mind if it's got a little bit of chop at idle. I don't mind the chop, but I don't, you know. As far as drivability goes and stop and go traffic, I want this thing to perform as if it was a 2020 Corvette. It's got to be smooth. I don't want to have any hassles where it's bucking and wanting to pull forward when you're trying to drive. So I'm thinking the BTR cam is all right. I'm not sure if I'm leaving uh, horsepower on the table or not. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not, but you know what? I'm putting a turbocharger on it anyways. So regardless, if I'm losing 10 to 15 horsepower, 10 or 15 foot-pounds of torque, in the naturally aspired sense, when I throw the supercharger or the turbocharger on there, it's going to make up the difference, so it really won't make any difference. I mean, when you're at seven, 800 horsepower, you're not going to notice the difference. 
Uh, another thing I noticed, a lot of guys are saying that the aluminum block LS series engines could only handle 800 horsepower. The block itself cannot handle any more. And if you want to go with more power, you're better off going with the LQ4 six liter cast iron block or the LSX block that they sell from GM, which is way stronger. The only downfall is it's 100 pounds heavier. And that's 100 pounds of extra weight in the front of your car. And if you do power to weight ratio, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of weight. That's a lot of power you're losing. Uh, another thing, um, waiting on is as you can see here my steam port plug i lost it i don't know where it is i looked all over this place for the plate for the thing i got the one on the uh passenger side i don't know where the one for the driver's side went so i went on to amazon one night delivery actually uh one day delivery i ordered it yesterday i'm still waiting for it the steam kit that goes from the left to the right so i'm going to have a steam channel on the back too instead of having them plugged which is a good idea they recommend when you're high pointing an ls motor and I'm going to run it to the front and hook it up to the front lines and have it go to the cooling system. Of course, that's going to be another two, three hours of uh, customization to get that going. Anyways, you can see here, here's my um, screw and head studs. There's the nuts for the small bolts on the top there that were, I torqued those down to 25 foot pounds. And there's the studs on the other end there. I don't know if you guys can see it, it's kind of dark probably see it better on the other side um oh yeah there you go lots of light over there excellent studs i got them torqued down 80 foot pounds and uh they look nice and clean they don't seem to be um impeding on anything else like the headers or spark plugs or anything like that so that's good so yeah i'm just waiting for a couple of guys to show up and they're gonna I'm going to just supervise and have those guys drop the motor in. It should be pretty easy because I have the um, motor mounts, the Holly retro motor mounts on the clamshells on the frame. So it's basically going to be a drop in and slide back just an inch to get the, the pin guides on the transmission bell housing onto the motor. And bolt her right back up and then I'm going to have to deal with the fuel and exhaust system and the cooling system and on and on and on until I get it all back together. Um, I got Bosch. I replaced my Chinese fuel injectors I had. I didn't trust them with uh, Bosch 60 pound injectors. I bought out from uh, eBay off a vendor in California. They basically take the Bosch injectors and they blueprint them and they flow test them and they give you a flow sheet they actually email it to you and they give you all the specs on it which is great so i got to reprogram the holly because the holly i got the holly terminator x system and it's right now programmed for a ls3 which is a 368 i believe or 376 sorry cubic inch engine so now it's going to be a 416 uh you can't see the thing it's way too dark in here there's my uh bnm mega shifter really cool Really hard to shift because they gave me a five foot cable, which just does not work. I got the uh, 36 inch cable sitting on the driver's seat right there. I'll be installing that when I do the finals, when I put it all back together. Um, yeah, so that's about it for now. I'm just waiting for these guys to come over and help with dropping the motor in. Uh, another thing, coolant reservoir. I got, believe it or not, a four liter uh, coolant tank. It's actually a bottle that you buy the coolant in, and I got it shoved inside in front of the radiator. Well, it's not really in front of the radiator, but it's in the front over here. I don't know what you'd call this part over here, and I got the hose going to it. You can see the line right there coming off the rad, and it comes across here, and it goes down, and there's, there's, the, there's the bottle. It's just a bottle. And I really want to replace that with a nice stainless steel proper coolant reservoir that, you know, there's plenty of room in the front of the motor. I, I was thinking about putting a tank, like a thermos style tank right in the front between the two radiators coming up and have it hooked up over there with a bracket going right out to the radiator uh, plate shroud i think that'll be neat um other things that i did i took the pontiac turbo trans am oil pump apart because i know the ratio the oil pressure and everything on it's different than the one that was on the ls3 motor because the ls3 motor actually used to be an l92 motor which used to be in an escalade that transformed into an ls3 which is basically the same engine, really. Same head, same block. I think the only difference was the cam 
and the Pistons, and that's irrelevant now because I got the Summit Racing uh, Pro LS Series uh, forged aluminum pistons in here anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference anymore. It's actually uh, Super LS, what, I don't know what you want to call it. It's uh, going to be a beast. I'm hoping to get like 620, 630 horsepower at the crank the way it is now. And um, when I put the turbocharger on it, you know, I'm going to try to keep it at around 800 horsepower because rumor has it, as I said before, these blocks would only handle 800 horsepower before you have a problem. I don't know what the problem would be. I guess you'd have so much stress on the, the block that you may crack it and have issues. I'm not sure. Um, that's a great question. I'm going to ask uh, my vintage iron, Mike, because uh, he seems to know a lot of answers. And another guy, Richard Hollander, He's got a lot of great videos. He does nothing but testing on top of testing on top of testing. And actually, after watching all his videos, and I noticed that every single one of his videos, it's all about peak horsepower. He never talks about street quality idle. You don't want to have a motor that's like, runs like a bag of shit on the fucking street. Sorry, my, excuse my language. And then, uh, you know, try to drive it as a daily driver. You want something that runs nice and smooth. And you know what? His information obviously helped a lot because he explains a lot of stuff about camshafts, LS3s, different cylinder heads, cathedral port, rectangular port, and on and on and on, turbochargers, superchargers, carbureted. And I learned a lot of things off the guy. One thing I learned, LS3 factory intake manifold is probably one of the best ones. The fast intake is better, but if you want to dish out $1,200 to get an extra 20 horsepower, all the power to you. And the other intake that's better, obviously, is the Edelbrock Crossram, and Holly's got a Crossram also, but I think the Holly one is for uh, cathedral port heads, where the Edelbrock one is for the uh, square port heads, or rectangular port heads, I should say. But, you know, either way, they're both around $1,200, and you're only going to get, like, an extra 20 horsepower throughout the power band, which is pretty impressive that it gives you the power right off the start to the top, but... Uh, going back to Richard over there with his all his tests, you know, they're all about 3,000 RPMs and up, and he's putting huge cams in these motors with durations of like 400, or sorry, 240 degrees at 50 at an intake and 258 degrees on the exhaust side. That's great if you're running your car on the track and you got like a 4,000 RPM stall or a stick shift, but if you're driving the thing on the street, forget about it. It's going to be a dog. It's going to run crappy. It's not going to have any power until you're at like 5,000 RPMs. And who drives a daily driver at 5,000 RPMs? That being said, I have a, I think I mentioned it before in one of my other videos, I have a 3,000 RPM stall converter. Um, there she is there. It's a little bit smaller than the 2,500 RPM stall I had on it before. Smaller wise, I mean, I don't know if it's any smaller as why maybe it's an inch narrower it looks like an 11 inch as opposed to the other one i think the other one was a 12 inch but it's also enclaved a little bit in the front um so 3000 rpm stall with the btr at stage 2 cam which is supposed to be a very streetable cam and they claim btr claimed 470 horsepower at the back tires with certain mods on a ls3 so i'd add another 100 horsepower easily at the back tires with a stroker 416 so if you got 470 with an ls3 with that cam in it with like headers and so on and uh let's say 102 millimeter throttle body and, and you know performance injectors um porting is great but that's peak horsepower again you port your heads you're probably going to lose a little bit of power at the bottom end you're going to make more power at the top end it's almost like putting in a bigger cam so you know these LS3 heads or L92 heads, they flow 330 cc's cubic, you know, cubic feet a minute of air. That's plenty of air. That's like, that's making over 720 horsepower naturally aspired. So, or aspirated, sorry. So if you were going to go and um, port your heads, that's great. But, you know, I imagine you're going to be using your car for the track and drag racing and stuff, which is cool. No problem. I love that kind of stuff. But it's not a street car. You can't drive it on the road. And my intentions are to have a street car that I could drive on the road as a daily driver and kick some Mustangs and Corvettes and Camaros asses and some Chargers and Challengers too to boot. Why not? Anyways, thanks for watching the video. If you guys like it, give me the thumbs up. Subscribe if you like. And I'll be shooting another one pretty soon.
The next one you see, you'll probably see this pep, this puppy sitting in the engine bay of the Semi Bandit Trans Am. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Take care.